How would you like to provide customer service 24 hours a day and seven days a week? And, and how would you like your response time to improve exponentially? And, and how would you, oh, let's have ourselves a pocket-sized pep talk because by now you must know I'm talking about AI's effects on business and I have just the person to help me. A pocket-sized pep talk podcast that can help energize your business and your life with a quick, inspiring message. Now, here's your host, Rob Jollis. Today's guest, Victoria Holtz, is an expert on business exponential growth, leveraging AI. She is bilingual, international keynote speaker, delivering keynotes to hundreds of companies in more than 50 countries. She's an author and the developer of the Agile See What's Next Mindset Mythology. She's been featured in several TV programs, including Discovery Health, and she's got a book you're going to want to check out called Move to Great, 12 Strategies for Business Exponential Growth, Leveraging AI. Glad to have you with us and welcome to the show, Victoria. Thank you very much, Rob. It's an honor to be with you. Oh, it's a pleasure. And you know, for all those people listening, keep posting on LinkedIn, keep working at LinkedIn site. Because although we had met before, what caught my eye was a LinkedIn post you made. So now we'll go back to our show. But I tell you, that's why we post things on LinkedIn. You never know who's watching. And I really like the post that you had about AI. And I said, I got to have this woman on our show. So anyway, great having you here. Now, let's dive right in. And with you, I want to hear about what made you target AI. Because, you know, we're, look, we're all trudging along behind you. But what made you an early adopter? Well, thank you very much, Rob. Actually, I started listening and, and you know thinking about AI since before the pandemic because I I subjected one of my applications, my apps for USC. And it was a contest that everybody was looking to win. It was maybe they got around 800 submissions. And we were as we submitted an app that help people grow in a business. So thank God that app got chosen. So we were one of the 10 that were part of that group with USC and Global Silicon Valley. And it was very exciting that at that time, and I'm talking 2016, we were already speaking about AI. Not as we are doing now, but it, it was already a subject at that time. So from then on, we decided, well, what can we do with this? So we developed those avatars, which are incredible tools that you can talk with, and they are powered by, you know, that at that time, it was very, very easy AI. It right. was just a program of, you know, one, two, one, two. Right now, of course, now you can have a conversation, a full conversation using AI. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, what, what impresses me is, that and I speak to so many businesses, they sort of get locked in and go, This is our model, this is what we do, this is how we work. And people like you, and I would like to think people like me, but not always on my good days, people like me, start looking at different things that you know might be coming up. So I'll give you a just 20 second example. When we hit the pandemic, I, I'm the first to tell you, I'm gonna have some clients going, why that son of a gun. But I'm the first to tell you, I really knew very little about virtual communication. Uh, that was March of 2020. Uh, by April of 2020, I read everything there was about virtual communication. I made myself an expert and I immediately started giving lectures and seminars on setting up a studio, how to do it the best way. But I was a month ahead of everybody else. And I was mm -hmm. there because I was curious. It sort of sounds like you too of, Okay, you weren't necessarily an AI expert out of the gate, but something caught your eye and you said, I'm going to go for it. Well, you know, it was a good thing also to meet people that were programmers, because I'm not a programmer. I, I'm more in, a, in the business side, but I really knew what I wanted. In, so it was a very good way to meet with developers. And we had, a you know, a cohort from people from China, from India, from Malaysia. So also having this diversity and creativity to have this end result, which was the avatars. Now we were very lucky because we had the avatars before the pandemic. And since this is completely online, we right. were ready in a way for the pandemic because we could 
keep on working and delivering keynotes and seminars and also using the avatars for role play. Yeah, well, you were you were well set up. Uh, you know, me, I was scrambling like a lot of professional speakers were. But I look back on it just like you and I go, well, you know what? It, it pushed me out of my, as we call it, you know, prison of familiarity, right? And gets us going a little bit. That's... Mm -hmm. I just don't know how any how a business can just keep doing what it normally does for decades and decades. You you have to yes. be willing to adopt. So that's who you are. Let's talk about that book a little bit. Okay, it's Move to Great, 12 Strategies for Exponential Business Growth, Leveraging AI. All right, mm -hmm. I'm going to give you an opportunity right now. We've got some people walking dogs, listening in cars, scratching their head. Why should they go out and get this book? Well, thank you, Rob. The first of all, I need to be honest. I wrote this book last year and it's already old because AI is changing so fast that if you have the book from last year, please do get write to me and get the book that is coming out right now, this, this year. Because what I did is now I have QR codes for all the strategies where you can follow up how to leverage that strategy with the latest AI. Like in my book last year, I still talk about BARD. BARD does not exist anymore as is. So things are changing so fast in AI that I decided to then have the print book with the strategies. You know, if yeah. businesses really want to grow, this is like a step-by-step -step, uh, place where they can go to see what are the strategies they need to put in place, what are the best way to do those strategies, and how each strategy can help their business grow. How about give me an example, okay? So you 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 sort of ticked off a few, but let's mm -hmm. let's get into the let's get into the meat of it a little bit. Okay, so take AI, move it, and and you cherry pick. Uh, just pick up pick a topic in sales that you think AI would be that we should keep an eye on. Thank you. Well, you know it's very interesting. We talk about many things on the book, and this is based on more than thirty years working with Fortune five hundred companies. I work with many of the big ones like Microsoft and Uber and Oracle and all, you know, many, many Nestle, all kinds of companies. And I've seen over the years that companies suffer the same pains. Now, and one of the pains, of course, has to do with culture. So the first thing we look at is how to have a better culture. And we talk about mindset. So if you don't have the right mindset, it doesn't matter how many seminars you go to, how many Thing, how many coaches, you have to have the right culture, the right mindset. You know, I usually say, Rob, that the mindset is like the tortilla of the taco. Mm -hmm. So that's the basis. If you don't have the right tortilla, everything falls down. Well, I know, I know you have famous Taco Tuesday. So that's true. <laughs> you know, that, that tacos are very in right now. So, but definitely you have to have the right base. So for that, how do you use AI to create that? Mm -hmm. Well, we have seen that with companies. In fact, I just delivered a seminar to KPMG on AI. And it's about losing the fear of using AI. It's about mm -hmm. leveraging. It's about being more agile, doing things that can be more automatic. It's about making life simple. So we look at all the ways in which AI can help you in whatever you're doing at your job to make whatever is very operational simpler. That way you will have more time for innovation, for creativity, and for strategic things instead of just operations. So that's the first thing. And what we call that is becoming an AI-enabled company okay. where everybody at every level, at every department is using AI to leverage results. I'm I'm actually taking some notes because when you when I hear AI, I'm a host and a listener. Uh, so I I think that's smart. Um, you know I I do want to double back on one thing because it's 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 the heart of sales. And you know what we're doing is we're sort of taking AI and trying to push it into the it's all over it's everywhere, but trying to yes. push it into a sales audience. But you know the biggest obstacle we meet in sales, just like you just listed for AI is fear of change. That is the number one. People can give me 50 objections their customers are getting. It almost mm. always kind of boils down to you could be better and the way we have it isn't perfect, but what if you're worse? What if you create more problems, 
than we have right now. And I don't even know how to address those. At least I know how to fix my existing problems. Mm -hmm. And there's that fear of change piece that, that really um, hampers a lot of salespeople. And it sounds like AI is sort of from what you're describing in a similar way. So a little bit of fear of change hanging out there with this, with the concept of AI, although it's like a freight train. I don't know how we get out of the way. It's coming. It's coming. It's absolutely coming. And I, I, you know, I always have this phrase that there are two types of companies, the ones that use AI and the ones that are going to disappear. That's it. Yeah. So how do we use AI? So the first thing is to take off the fear. So this is why we first talk about mindset and we do a lot of exercises where they see how easy it is to apply it and they go, wow, and I can really do this and I can do a sales letter in seconds, yes. And there's a GPT for this and there's a GPT for that and you tell them exactly where to find the resources because a lot of things that also happen is there's a lot of information now on AI and people get lost. Where do we start? How do we start? How do we implement this to really take my company to exponential growth, which is what we want to do. So after having the basics, then we talk about, as you were saying, sales, which you are an expert in. And as you know, sales is all about cross-selling, up-selling, down-selling, about knowing what you have, giving an irresistible offer. And all of those things can be leveraged today with AI in a very simple way. Yeah. Uh, how about, and I'll tell you one that I see salespeople struggle with that I think might be a natural for AI, but I'm batting it into your court. Uh, follow-up. Uh, so many salespeople, they struggle with follow-up. They struggle with getting in the rhythm of what a follow-up looks like. They don't want to sell, but they want to get their name out there. There's a there's a real sort of sweet spot to trying to figure out how to follow up. Um, I'm assuming AI's got that covered, or or I could work with you, and you could show me how AI would uh, create follow up letters and and, and basically mm -hmm. a system to follow up. Definitely, definitely, and it, what is really incredible is, for example, you can create drip campaigns where I'm following up and, you know, I'm always in the mind of my clients. And you can say, hey, you know, create content for 60 days. What content? Please create, you know, posts on these different things or create emails looking at these different subjects that are relevant to my clients. And in seconds, you can have it. Of course, you have to refine it. You know, I wouldn't advise anybody to take it just as it is from AI and then post it. You have to give it your touch. You have to do a little bit of tweaking, but the basic, the 80% is there. And what is really great is also in the whole process about sales, going first from falling in love, you know, which is, I don't know you, but I, you know, I want to, you want it's about getting these people to get to know you. And then when you sell, as you say, get them to still love you because you're still giving them value even after the sale. Even if they don't buy anything else from you, they're still getting value. Right. And you think that AI can can sort of sense, I'm, I'm concerned about personality is where I'm coming from. In other words, I follow up a certain way with a more dominant individual. It's shorter. Mm -hmm. It's not real chatty. If it's a social uh -huh. individual, it's there's a lot about how the weekend might have gone, et cetera. If it's uh -huh. an analytical, I'm more throwing some maybe some numbers that I saw that I thought might be interesting to them. Can AI help me with that, you know, sort of assess that personality and rhythm? Well, what you should th there's something that you should do because of course the AI at this moment would know that Rob is a fantastic, charismatic person, and that person is uh, everybody knows maybe. that. How would AI not know that? <laughs> Come on now. Well, this they this AI I'm talking about is not okay. intelligent. <laughs> but you know, you, then you should tell AI, you know, please write this for this kind of personality, looking at this and this subject, and then it will write that. Now this write this for this kind of client, which is this kind of personality. So we even tell them, you know, we give them a hundred sales prompts. So they don't even need to think about it. You know, mm -hmm. if this is this, you use this prompt. If you're going to do this, use this prompt. So they know already what prompts to use in order to get the pre-sale, during the sale, and after the sale. Okay. So let's say that I'm, I'm because I am, I'm kind of 
twitching over here because it sounds really good. So I want to adopt AI into my uh, my entrepreneurial practice here. Do I go to you? Do I go to Chad GBT? Do I go to you to show me how to use a, a certain thing? What's my next move if I'm listening? Cause, and, and maybe we got to throw your website out there a few times, but what you're describing sounds fantastic. I've heard it described, but I find myself finishing by going, oh, that sounds great. Well, yeah, it is. Okay, bye. And I go back to my fear of change. I still can get the ball in the court this way. What would be my next move if I if I've decided that's it? I want to jump on board. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, there are many people that are self learners. So if you are that kind of person, it, you, you know, you can just get the book and look at what you know. The book is like a very step by step guide, and then follow the resources that are online. And maybe that way you can definitely go and start getting results. But some of us also like a little bit more of coaching, mentoring, then we need a little bit more help and we like the co you know the, the, the coaching group calls. So that's the other thing that we can do. We can help you and your company become AI enabled. Help first get rid of the fear, which is done in probably the first session because as soon as they are playing with what we're telling them to do, they say, oh, I can do this. Oh, I can do that. There's a lot of wows. And then once we have that, go step by step in what your company needs, because there's no one size fits all. Right. You know, some people say, well, give me a formula exactly step by step. Of course, the, the book has to have, you know, something for everyone. But when we go to a company, we really look at what does your company need and where shall we start? Shall we start with the, the market dominating position, for example? So many companies, Rob, and I know you you know this because you're a super expert. Even the company I delivered a, a conference to today, I asked him, what's your market dominating position? Hmm. What? Yeah. They look at me like, what? Well, what makes you different? What, why should I buy from you instead from anybody else and, or your competitors? Mm, and even at the C-level, sometimes they are, they are thinking, I don't really know. Or they see very general things, oh, service, or we are the best in quality, or, but everybody says that. So sometimes it's just crafting a really powerful market dominating position and helping them even use AI so they can find what makes them different. Yeah. I'm so glad you said that. I really am. I, I, I'm going to leave the name of the company out, but I'll tell you, it's one of the five biggest car manufacturers in the, in the world. And I met with them. And said the same thing, and they scratched their head. And I changed the question until I finally said, all right, let me try it this way. If I were walking in, looking for a car, what is it that you'd want me to want before I even open my mouth? And they still struggled with the question. And the problem was, well, how do you sell it when you don't know mm -hmm. what it is you want the customer to want? Uh, exactly. I fear that, well, now you're going to get what I like about it. And that's not called selling. That's called me just... Mm -hmm talking about my product i also want to get you remind you something i'm doubling back but you know you've got a book and you say rob the technology is changing that happens in almost in any book that has technology in it i have a seminar book out there one of the editions has me talking about where to stand next to an overhead projector uh, but but four editions later we you know we mm -hmm. keep going i'm giving you a, a tale to, to let you know that yes technology changes but i'm looking a book at a one book that's gone through four changes and that mm -hmm. is 5% of the book, 10% of the book. Most mm -hmm. of it is right on cue. Uh, it doesn't really change. It's just that we get readers that go, man, this woman doesn't know why they've replaced that with this. Okay. So we do another edition, but, but if uh -huh. somebody were listening and, and, and we're going to give them your website a couple of times in about 20 seconds, we're going to give it. But if I go to your website, I can get the newest edition or I can get an addendum or something along that line. Is that true? Yeah, that's absolutely true. And also, you know, you can get the book in Amazon and in every strategy. Now we have a QR code. So you just follow that QR code and that will t get you immediately to the resources online, Good. which are, I have to say, we're updating weekly because this changes a lot. Now, Great. today, for example, we give them like a hundred sales prompts, as, as I said, that they really love. But in a few months, nobody's going to use prompts anymore. We mm -hmm. won't, we won't even need prompts. So this is changing very fast. Wow. Wow. Whew. 
faster than an overhead projector i'm hearing okay <laughs> it's like a model t sport you know mm -hmm. um let me swing back to your business a little bit one of the toughest things that i find and i'm at this 31 years as a professional speaker is um, once I get a client, I tend to hang on to them and they hang on to me and that's good. It's a good report card for both of us. Yeah. But acquiring customers can be tough. Really, that's when you notice first thing I was going at was, can AI help with follow-up? Can AI, because <laughs> I, once I acquire a customer, I want to hold on to them. Mm -hmm. Talk to me a little bit about how you acquire customers. Um, mm -hmm. If there's you know something, because I always love talking to people who are out there mixing it up. Do you have any type of approach that you use? Oh, definitely. Well, you know, the first thing, and this is why I also talk about market dominating position, because the first thing is what makes you different. And then that's your brand. Mm -hmm. And once you have your brand, then everything has to be about how you are solving problems that people have that they do not want to have. So how does this brand help X, help W, help? And then it's creating value for them. So it's not really selling. I Even I, I have a, a talk about, you know, stop selling, start co-creating. I'm going to have to throw no. you off the show in a second. You better finish yes. that conversation. Keep going. No. Why are we stopping no, no, selling? No. Go ahead. No, it's not about, you know, sales, I think, sometimes becomes you know, a supplier and, a, and and there's a client and sometimes it's like this, you know, they and I think it should be like this. I'm right. going to help you solve a problem you have and, and I'm going to help you grow. And of course, we, we're going to offer value to each other, which is not the hard sell that, you know, by this. So it's create, creating solutions together. So once you have exactly what makes you different, then it's about a lead campaign. And here is to look at who you serve, what problems you're solving. I'm not saying anything new to you or to your listeners. And then offer them a lot of value in whatever they need. And when they think about it, they say, oh, I'm going to talk to Rob because I, you know he's written books about sales. He's a super expert. And I'm thinking about sales, Rob comes to mind. Or if somebody says, well, I'm the best at, I know we, we were working with a client that is the best or, you know, his market dominating position was, I am going to give you the best uh, climate in your house. I'm going to give you, you know, the, the best the satisfaction to if it's hot, you're going to be always in, in, in cold. And if it's cold, you're going to be warm. Think about us whenever the weather changes. And they started, you know, giving advice about what, what to do and how to save energy. And then people say, well, you know, I'm, I'm thinking about probably a new AC. And then they, they think about this person or this company that already delivered a lot of value. So it's about this lead campaign and really going at it. Because sometimes, Rob, they say, well, I already sent 10 emails. Nobody responded. As you know, you have to be sending 100 or maybe 200 but not of stuff that everybody is sending. Please right. do not do that. I make this doing that. And don't, don't speak about you, speak about something that is the problem that the client needs to solve. Right. And what you're describing, by the way, so so now that I'm teasing you, messing with you about, your, about selling, it's, look, if you're going to sell the wrong way, and, and the only word I, I, I keep coming up with is a vendor. You want to go out there mm -hmm. and be a vendor. Okay. Yes. I, I, and just like you said, I really don't know what problem you're solving. I don't even know how to spell the last name of your company here, but I can, t I, I, they taught me a whole lot about my product and I'm going to regurgitate that. I'm going to <laughs> just lay it out. You stop me when you hear something that's good. That's mm -hmm. the old school we're trying to get rid of because the new school that not only wants to understand what problem you're thinking about uh, solving, mm -hmm. but has enough energy and compassion and enthusiasm mm -hmm. and knowledge to inquire and stay there like a therapist and, and ask you a series of what happens if we don't have to wait for it to happen, but we have a conversation about it and they become so valuable to everybody's company. So those are the mm -hmm. salespeople that I'm trying to protect and that we're mm -hmm. talking about right now. And even when you bring in the concept of AI, you're absolutely right. If, if it's a little scary to you, you could stand on the side. Well, people do fear change. But what mm -hmm. we, you got to do, what I got to do, what, if we believe in it, 
is we got to get our voice out there just like you're doing and write that book and bring people to your website and tell them, um, mm -hmm. I have passion for this because I know it will help you. First, I have to mm -hmm. understand you, but that's when we sell. That's when sales is beautiful. When we truly believe what it is we're doing. When we don't, it's as you've described, which is not a very pretty sight. And but I think maybe maybe like some of the, the all the old technology that's moving on, let's mm -hmm. just hope that maybe that old thinking is moving on too. I don't know. I that's agree my, completely. My thinking. I agree completely. And you know, I used to teach a seminar called Negotiations with Walmart. Mm. Because I said, if you can negotiate with Walmart, you will be able to negotiate with everyone. Right. And it also, I was I, I knew Walmart because I've been working for them for a long time, and I knew how they thought. And then I thought I, I knew how the suppliers thought when negotiating. And they always say this very, it's very tough. So you know, it's like in New York, if you can make it there, you'll make it everywhere. Right. right. So we said, well, if you can negotiate with Walmart, everybody is going to be very easy. Hysterical. No, because that was like the tough one. And then I changed that completely. So for example, uh, Nestle, instead mm. of being a supplier and every time, you know, battling about mini percentages and me say, why don't we get together and co-create? What do you need? What do we need? How can we do things together? And in that way, they developed very good ideas to, to work together and in a partnership where everybody wins. And those those ideas got a huge return on investment, much more than you know seven cents in each transaction. It became big ideas that changed the way you are collaborating with clients. And that's when I say stop selling and start co-creating. You know, we did that also with Sam's Club and Kimberly Clark, and we invited Nestle's one. Say, what do we do, for example, a, a month of the baby? You know. So, you know, all the baby products and everybody wins because we all get together and we invest in this big idea and sales went all the way up. So these are the things where, where we say, not only we need to sell better, we need to understand the client better, as you're saying, we need to stop looking at inside transactional to really become partners. And also we need to I, I know it sounds really horrible when I said, but guarantee return on investment. Well, stay which is there, what I do with my clients. Yeah, mm -hmm. stay there because I was doing some research on you and you provide a very unique guarantee. Tell people about that. The money back well, one. I, I, I always hate when they say money back guarantee. It sounds so cheesy, so flaky. I don't know. It's like, ah. Uh, but what I have seen is companies really need results. And say, they ask me for a seminar or they ask us for a keynote and they say, well, yes, I can deliver the keynote. And, you know, people go out really happy and super excited and inspired, but then nothing happens. So if we only give them inspiration, but we don't give them tools, we are hindering that business. So the idea is to give them inspiration, but also give them the tools. So that way you can make sure they have return on investment. So if they don't at least, you know, increase their numbers in 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 it to be able to pay for what you asked for, for whatever, say, let's say a keynote is, I don't know, X amount. If this didn't create X amount plus double that, then don't pay me. Very impressive. I, I will tell you that I actually don't invoice customers until I'm, the job is done. And if they don't like the job, I won't invoice them. I'm, I, I'm wow. knocking on wood. I've never had anybody say, don't invoice me, but yeah. I let them know. I don't need half of it. If I go out of the country, I take pieces, percentages, <laughs> et cetera. In the country, no, if you don't like it, then don't pay me. But mm -hmm. I, I've offered before when I've gotten in negotiation, not with Walmart, to say, mm -hmm. I'll tell you what, don't pay me then either. Just give me X percentage of the increase, the sales that's going to go on here. And if you don't increase sales, you don't have to pay me. Nobody mm -hmm. will take me up on that offer, yes. <laughs> but I would love to do it uh, because like mm -hmm. you, although uh, Victoria, I, I think one of the issues also is you hit it right on the head. We get them all excited. Maybe there aren't enough process behaviors, measurable techniques that are repeatable and predictable, but what does the implementation look like? 
So you do a great job. You show a company exactly what to do and how to do it. You give them a book, you give them a website, mm -hmm. we're here to help you. But if they don't adhere to that implementation plan, and That's sometimes they go, you know, they have something else, mm -hmm. shiny penny, as I call it, catches their eye and they want to do something else. It mm -hmm. affects implementation and it affects your relationship with the company. How do you Absolutely. get around that? And again, you'll see me taking notes on this one because that's something that I have to deal with from time to time. Mm -hmm. No, absolutely. And you know what we look at? I, I give them a, when we're not not only for a keynote, when I deliver a keynote, of course, this is just a, the keynote and that's it. But when we're really working with the clients, I do a, a company evaluation for free. Not And then not me. We do it with a, co a company that does company evaluations has nothing to do with me. They, they do it for many banks. And I said, you know what? I'll pay for the company valuation for you. And then I'm going to work with you. And, you know, session after session. And as you say, Rob, I'm not going to go to the next session until you implement what we talked about. You know, so, for example, in, in, in one session, they have, let, let's say, two or three brilliant ideas that they can implement because we take them through that. It's a, it's a very step-by-step -step questionnaire to see how you can improve this, what you can do here. And when they go, oh, I didn't think about, oh, I didn't think about that. And how much is that going to save you? And how much is that going to increase uh, your revenue? And so they do the math and they say, oh, this is going to incre increase my revenue by 20%. Okay, when are you going to start doing it? How do we make it so you start doing it? And I'm not going to see you until you, you, know, you prove that you've been doing X and C. So that really gets them into implementation. And of course, as you know, and I'm sure you do it as well, if in the guarantee doesn't work if they don't do the work, because right. there's no way we can go out and do everything for them. But we kind of do a lot of things for them when we take them step by step to see how numbers change. And the great thing is that after we work with them, we do the valuation again. So it's a third party, has nothing to do with us. So they can see how they got return on investment, but not only on investment, return on people, return on sustainable results, and what I call return on expectations, making sure that the expectations of everybody, especially the business owner or the, 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 the committee or the managing committee are met. Good. Now, when you teach... And let's stay on this. So you do, you do keynotes. I certainly know that you do a lot of them and all over the place. Do you, do you have the capacity? Do you follow up those keynotes with an offering of workshops? That's question number one. Mm -hmm. You do. Yes. Well, I do the keynote. I give them a lot of stuff for free that they can follow up with. But if of course somebody wants a little bit more help, then we do, we, we have an online thing that right. they can follow kind of a done for you but we also have the coaching calls which is group coaching and right. and i love them because also people get ideas from other people sometimes you're in your business and you are like looking only at what you're looking at but sometimes i, I never of course have competitors in the same group right. you know the companies have to be from different industries nothing to do one with each other but sometimes you get an idea from somebody that has a company that has nothing to do with you, what you're doing, but it's a brilliant idea that you can use. So right. the power of the group is fantastic. I, I completely agree with you. It's almost ruined me as a, a coach because although I coach on the side, I like group coaching sessions for just what you said. First of all, we're working on case studies. We're working on, you know, I've been teaching you how to do something. Now let's mm -hmm. go do it. Bring bring a client with you that you you know that you're working on. You didn't get. You're struggling with. And as a team, let's work on this. And just as you said, somebody comes up with an idea, and even if it's just a kooky idea, it allows us to get to another idea that we wouldn't have found without the the nutty one. And so all that really goes along. I'll tell you what I was was I was gnawing at for a moment. I find in in keynotes for me, I can open the door to an idea. But in workshops, I can change the culture of an organization. And I'm not so sure we can do that in an hour, but we can certainly do that with a smaller crowd where we're really, uh, you know, putting real numbers down on paper. Mm -hmm. But and here's my question to you. 
the man, well, I'm, <laughs> it's a quick, Rob, do you have a question? Or are you just going to keep talking? Sorry, that's my other head going, be quiet. I find that the managers are the tough ones. Meaning, we're talking about implementation, right? Mm -hmm. Usually the team is ready to implement. Are the managers ready to implement? Do you have any, do, do you, do you ever run into any kind of rub with management when you're trying to sort of change that organization's approach to AI and you bring in AI, Victoria, you are changing the culture of the organization a bit. Um, mm -hmm. Who's pushing back for me and sales training it's managers. What about you? Definitely. I agree with you. So when, if we're going to do this project, it has to start from the top. If not, it's not going to work. So the first thing is management, top leadership. So, you know, as I was saying last week, I had top management of this finance company and we work with them. Now, if they are convinced, then they're going to make sure that this works. But, so, and then goes wall to wall. I do not like bottom up or 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 being in, or the leaders have it and they will teach others that doesn't happen. So first you go top leadership and then you go wall to wall, meaning you deliver the same seminar to everybody in the company, to every level of the company. So they feel inspired as the top leadership did to make sure that accountability happens, that agile happens, that the changing processes to become simpler, faster, better, cheaper happen, happen at all sides of the organization. Here, here, and well said. And may I add, managers who are listening, no observing. We're not setting up observation tables for you. You're going to be in that you or wherever that room is, and and you're and you're going to do that not because we're asking you to, because that'd be the smartest thing you'll ever do. Because if you want to see a team that will follow you and believe in what you're taught, what you're offering, you can't be sitting in the back row with, with your smartphone. Saying, yeah, yeah, I'm listening. You got to be in there making the same mistakes they make, having the same questions they have. So you can look at somebody and say, it threw me too initially, but now I'm starting to understand. How can you have a conversation with somebody who you're trying to change their mind if you never went through it yourself? So a here, here to you, I'm a firm believer, and we always come from the top down, although traditionally we see it often coming from the bottom up. And that's why training fails so often. We, we mm -hmm. can't afford to train this, to, to fail in AI. This is too important, I think. I, I agree completely. This is too important. I right. think right now we are, are the, you know, at a moment where it's, it's a pivotal moment. Either mm -hmm. you're doing what you need to do and to become more agile, to really leverage AI in whatever you're doing. And also people say, well, yeah, you no, know, AI is difficult. AI is not difficult. It's so easy. No, it's just that it it really needs someone sometimes to tell you step A, B, C, D. So you do not get lost in so many offerings today that I think as in all oh, as in everything, you have the people that really work with you to make you successful and the ones that just want to get, you know, grab some money and whatever. And they couldn't care less about what happens with you. And, yeah. then, and that's the problem again with everything, right? Yeah. And even with, with you, I've seen you deliver keynotes. You are absolutely fantastic. You're I'm engaging, sure. you're inspiring, you're fun. And this is what you want audiences to have. Not the typical conference where, you know, and blah, 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 blah. No, you want people to be engaged, to be inspired, to practice it during the keynote to play during the keynote, to even, you know, I, I have these avatars, as I told you with AI, and they come up to the to, to stage and they play with the avatars and say, oh my God, like today, exactly today, we you know we had someone come up and play with the avatar and then the person started laughing and the avatar say, why are you laughing? And they went, the avatar can see me, you know? <laughs> but that's the idea where they can see that the things that we knew before, are not necessarily the things that are going to work in the future. And we need to be open, for example, for role plays with AI, even in sales to, for example, if you have salespeople, how to manage objections, how to 
manage the first three minutes, how to do the irresistible offer, where, how do you connect with the other person so they feel that they were with a friend and not a vendor? I love your word, you know, not a vendor. All of that they can practice in uh, with AI in uh, role plays with avatars, for example. Yeah, that sounds great. Yeah, I mean, listen, it, we can talk about processes and behaviors until we actually say, okay, it's like a golf club. I'm not much of a golfer, but here's the club. Now you swing it. Uh, mm -hmm. That's what role plays do. That's what case studies do. That's what, yeah. that's what, you know, and I'm just going to do 12 seconds on this, but the biggest mistake we make in training is we're typically talking a little too much and we're not giving them the opportunity to role play. Nobody loves role playing by the way, but if we handle it, um, nicely meaning we don't have to role play somebody in front of the rest of the room why would you mm -hmm. want somebody to try a new skill and experiment and take a chance and expose them to um, the entire room while they're doing it so let's crawl before we walk and walk before we run on that one you said something that i just want you to know i'm so grateful you said some very nice things about my delivery i appreciate that you my friend are out there a lot. I, 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 I can't let you go without this last question for you. And that is, um, you're, you are very active as a keynote speaker, um, and out, all over the place. You can't in this business, you can't last if there isn't something that makes you different. You started with that. You said, well, you got to figure out what your brand is. So I ask you, what's your, what do you think your secret of success is because you are really filling those seats up. What, yeah. tell me, give me, give it to me. Well, what are you doing? Well, you know, the first thing is that we offer value before, during, and after. Okay. So before the keynote, uh, we do assessments. So depending on whatever subject they want me to talk about, if it's about exponential growth or about agile mindset or about AI, so we do the AI readiness test or we do creative roles or so people do the test before or the assessment before the keynote. And this is really great, Rob, because the, it's a personal thing and they get back an email saying, hey, Rob, you have 30 percent of A, 40 percent of B. And what is this? You'll know it at the keynote. So you're creating expectation. People really want to go because I want to know why. I, what does it mean that I have 30% of A or 70% of B? So they really want to go. So and this creates uh, also a good way to you know make sure that people will attend, and also gives me an idea of who I'm talking to because I love tailoring the keynotes. You know I've seen people that you deliver the same thing all. You no, know, it's copy paste, copy paste. That doesn't work. It's a really fine tuning. You know, the best compliment that anybody can give me after delivering a keynote is, hey, you work here, right? Because, you That's know, great. I've asked so many things about what they want, what, you know, what the culture is, who am I talking to, what problem they need to solve. So it's really fine tuning to make that keynote for that specific company. And then during, we play a lot. We do games, we, we do it in, in a very fun way, but also very profound. Because I do believe that people learn better and as you do as well when they're having fun, but also they have a lot of practice. So we do exercises, we do the avatars, we have an exponential growth simulator so they can try what happens when you increase 1% to one, the things 1% better. How can you, what is the effect of the 1%? And they can see it live in that simulator and they go, wow, you know, I never thought about compound growth or exponential growth in this way. So they have a lot of fun. They play, they get inspired. But then after that, we give them a toolkit, a digital toolkit where they can find everything that we talked about and much more so they can implement what they learned. So it doesn't stay in an inspiring keynote they can really take it and we, we give them even an action plan. These are the things that we recommend you do. And then just, of course, they have to put in their timeline and work with their peers in what we call peer networks. So I think that makes it very different from, I, I guess, many of the keynotes that we see out there.
Oh, yeah. Now, I'm just going to summarize what I'm, what I'm hearing, okay? An assessment before most keynoters will not do that. Tailoring keynotes, we say we're going to do it, but uh, we can do a much better job. To have somebody tell you your work there would be the nicest compliment that anybody could ever uh, offer. Uh, interaction, critical. Uh, the, the tools, I'm going to refer to that as job aids, but something that allows somebody almost training wheels on the bike. Remember, we're, we're showing him something different. So it's not easy necessarily to get on the bike and ride around up the block with it. So we're going to put mm -hmm. some training wheels on there, a job aid, something to assist you. And as you get better, you take the tra training wheels off. You won't need as much of this. Uh, and then implementation, which should be all mm -hmm. our grades. So you really ticked every single box out there. That's why I'm thinking you really, your, your keynotes sound like workshops, quite frankly. You just got to lengthen them out a little bit. You know, give yourself a little bit more time. Um, mm -hmm. But that was spectacular. Really good. And you are spectacular. I really enjoyed this. Uh, and I, and what's interesting about you is you come from different angles. You come from an AI knowledge. You come from a, a delivery knowledge. Um, and you've got a sales knowledge in there. Uh, so you're really hitting on three cylinders there. Okay. Where do we find, what, what, give us the website. I was teasing it and I never got there. Give us that website. Well, if, if I want to go to my speakers page, that's victoriaholtz.us. And if they really want to go into the, what we discussed, they can go to move to great.com. Okay. And uh, if they're really smart, they're going to go to Amazon. They're going to go find Move to Great, 12 Strategies for Business Exponential Growth, Leveraging AI Above Quota Performance. Um, and um, you... And I would love to connect in LinkedIn, you know, as, as right. we did. You we hear that, folks? Other, but then we connected in LinkedIn, and I think LinkedIn is the best way that we can connect and, you know, follow each other. Yes, that would be fantastic. I would love to connect with anybody that is hearing us right now and wants to chat. That would be maybe the best way and the easiest. Now, something else we share. That to me, I'm I'm not a Facebook guy. Sorry, I'm not Instagramming. I, I, I just don't have enough pictures for you folks. But I take LinkedIn seriously as well. Mm -hmm. So uh, Victoria Holtz, just spell that so everybody spells it right when they find you on LinkedIn. It sounds, uh, just make sure there's that, that we're not, yeah. don't have any kooky letters in there. How do you spell that <laughs> name? You. So it's Victoria and then it's Holtz, H-O-L-T-Z. Just like it sounds, just like it sounds. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, my friend, uh, you, uh, I, I'm, I'm so glad that I spotted your posting on LinkedIn. Again, <laughs> folks, that's why we do this. Uh, so we can reconnect. And I've really enjoyed having this conversation. I I took three different categories of notes while you were talking because it taught me it reminded me of a few things on my own delivery I've got to keep an eye on. But uh, listen, the only thing to fear about AI is nothing. Get on the bus. Uh, mm -hmm. If you need some help, grab that book. If you want some a voice behind it, you know where to find Victoria. Thank you so much for being on, and uh, it's really nice to reconnect with you. Thanks for talking with me today. Thank you very much, Rob. It has been an incredible journey with you, and I'm very grateful and honored to be here with you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Well, we'll do it again as well as we can next time, everybody. Until then, stay safe. Thanks so much for listening. If you enjoyed today's show, please rate and recommend it on iTunes, Outcast, or wherever you get your podcasts. You can also get more information on this show and Rob at Jollis.com.